Hello everyone. Oh, blurry. There we go. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Super Dungeon Designer Dev Stream. Uh, we took a week off last week because of uh, Halloween and some things going on. So have a couple things to show off this week. Some fun things. So we've got. Um, we uh, changed around some of the values with enemies. So we're going to play around with uh, with enemies and kind of how they feel and function in the game now. And then uh, we made some nice new icons in build mode for objects. Uh, just kind of tidying things up, making things look a little nicer. So we're going to work on that and test around and we'll see how it's going. Hi, Jamie. Happy Friday, Jamie. All right, let's jump on in. All right, so. First thing to note. So before we had kind of um, just like icons on the objects themselves. So we uh, added little uh, little backgrounds to the icons, little like square backgrounds so that they stand out a little nicer. Oh yeah, and the uh, statues are movable now. That was an issue last stream. So we'll show that off too. But I think the biggest thing here, we just, we kind of want to see how it looks on, I think it looks great for the objects that take up one square. Just want to make sure it looks good for the stuff that takes up more than one square. So like the, uh, the bookshelf here, you know, it, it kind of sticks to the art, so it's okay. The uh, invisible cube's a little awkward because the uh, it overlaps the square above it, so we're still kind of playing around with this and trying to see if we like it. <laughs> hey, Danny, what's up, man? I think these icons are looking pretty nice. Let's put down some containers. Oh, you didn't test the tables? Okay, that'll be fun. Let's see what happens. So um, Matt made these really cool looking icons for every object and every enemy that can be put into things. So now instead of um, showing kind of a pixelated version of the item because of the different zoom levels, it now shows the icon for the item, which looks really nice. Setting up your webcam. All right, cool. Okay, table looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that works. 
We could probably move this one over a little. But other than that, looks good. <laughs> it didn't break catastrophically like I was expecting. Yeah, it's always nice when that happens, right? Oh, okay. Well, that broke catastrophically. <laughs> the uh, vertical table. Just the top right corner for some reason. Interesting. Yeah, so every icon has a nice looking... Or every item has a nice looking icon. They're also on the wrong side. Oh, whoops. Oh, on this side, yeah. So for gold, we decided just to do one icon to make it easy. All right, let's check out the enemies. There's the bat. And each slime has their own icon. Ghost. <laughs> I love the ghost icon. Got the statue. And Mr. Warthog. Flames, yeah, you can't put them in there. Okay. Yeah, I think it looks really nice and clean. I think we looked at all the icons. Yeah, I put them all down at least once. Yeah, it looks good. That'll be nice on the once we get the tables updated and then Yeah, the only one that we really are going a little back and forth on is the cube. Just looks like if you overlap it in the wrong spot, it can look like that icon's like attached to the thing above it. Which is a little weird. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to play around with that. Like the next thing we're gonna try is just bumping this down so it lines up with the back of the cube, which might 
make it look a little better. Alright, I think that's all the icons. Uh, so another new thing, uh, statues can now spawn from the uh, spawners before they could not. So that's kind of neat. You can set up infinitely spawning statues. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, we increased the speed that the statue enemy fires now. So before, um, it was pretty slow. So now the statue enemy is a bit more of a threat. And yeah, we removed the uh, invincibility uh, frames from a lot of the enemies. But uh, we'll play around with that a little more in a second here. <laughs> Statue is now a ghost worse enemy, yeah. So you're really more limited in just how fast you can swing. You don't have to worry as much about the invincibility frames. Oh, the statue isn't colored. That's interesting. But it's movable. Wait, didn't I put down a colored one? I did. Hmm. Interesting. It does move, though. And I like the speed. The statue enemy also does a neat bob animation when he fires. Oh, I didn't even notice. Oh yeah, the little, the head bobbing up and down. So yeah, that wasn't in there before, nice. Very cool. Okay, so the other thing that uh, we really want to test out is how we removed the invincibility frames from the enemies and how that affects the gameplay. So let's see how it feels to fight some enemies. We'll start with just the sword. Just put some blobs out here. And I think for the blobs, it really doesn't feel all that different because they're knockback. Like, they knock back so well that by the time you get to them, their iframes would have been done anyway. So let's do something like, like this, you know, where you got them in a corner. Yeah, I think it feels fine because, like, there's such a delay on your swing anyway that it doesn't doesn't really affect much. I'm so used to waiting for the iframes that, like, I need to condition myself to not wait. <laughs>
Try red, red slimes since they charge at you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's fine. Because now it's really you're just waiting for your sword to be ready. In a way, it actually feels a little more rewarding because it's like I knew how to click when my sword was ready again. So it's like timing that kind of feels rewarding in a way. I should have gave myself a sword first. It was at that moment when James knew he was in trouble. <laughs> okay, if we don't unpause, we'll never get hit, right? Oh, that's interesting. Wait, what did I do? <laughs> Record scratch. <laughs> yeah, even with the Warthog, there's such a delay that it's fine. So another change that we made, this is a pretty big change. Um, the, uh, actually, did we make this change? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> actually, I don't remember if we changed this, hang on. Just kidding, uh, no change here, nothing to see. <laughs> so we, we talked about um, potentially making the flame enemy invulnerable. Uh, Cause I think right, we removed its, um, its frames and because it doesn't have any knockback it's just very easy to kill now so we're thinking we're going to make the flame enemy invincible you can't kill it which would be nice for a couple of reasons um one so that you don't accidentally kill it if you need it to solve a puzzle because they can light torches and then uh two we're going to have an item later in the game that will be able to kill flame enemies I don't want to say what item yet because I haven't designed it, but, you know, something like an ice rod or like a, you know, some kind of water magic, whatever. Um, at some point there will be something that can kill it, so... Super Soaker, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that's the route we're going to go. We're going to make him invincible. Fire Hydrant, there we go. You could smack it and water sprays out. <laughs> Super soak. Are, are we playing cards against humanity right now? And then, yeah, the... Uh, being able to smack the enemy... More than once doesn't really matter for the ghost because he turns invincible right away anyway. But let's see if we can... Oh, wait, don't do that. Let's see if we can manage to hit him twice before he transforms. Okay, you can. So, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think we should fix that. 
I think we just leave the iframes in for the ghost because it doesn't matter, right? I always like the idea of having two variations of each enemy. Take the statue, for example, one like it is now and one that's invincible to sword and only vulnerable to items such as bombs. Yeah, that would be cool. We do actually have like a gold version of the statue that we haven't implemented yet. That could be something cool. <laughs> could be a hat. Yeah, so you can... It's it's not too tough to get two hits in on the ghost now before it transforms. So yeah, we'll probably want to fix it. Okay. Yeah, uh, personally, I think I, I like the change we made to the, the iframes. It's nice. It definitely changes up the statue enemy a lot because like now like it, it fires a lot faster like you can take it out so much quicker because before you would just be slashing at it and like only half your hits were landing yeah yeah he attacks a lot faster How tough is a room of them now? Oh, don't make me do it. Oh god. Wait, oh, okay, ah, well, ah, shoot, wait, no, I'm... <laughs> There's this safe, there's this... I can... It's pretty tough. <laughs> Destroyed. like a bullet hell game. Okay, thanks for hanging out, man. Big fan of this change, pure chaos. Yeah, basically. I'm just going to click on each of these items really quick just to make sure they all appear with the uh, icons. Okay, and this one rotates. That's good.
Okay, yeah, I think that's all of them. Uh, so yeah, the statues. So yeah, the colored version isn't showing up, so we gotta fix that, but let's play around with moving them. Is this blue one new? I don't remember that one. All right. Oh, okay, it's just the snake that's not showing as uh, in color. All the other ones are good. Blue one wasn't in the last stream. Okay, yeah, he's cool. So yeah, you can finally move these. And they move nice and slow, which feels good. All right, let's play around with this blue one and make sure that the art cuts off in the right spots. That feels pretty good on the back. Nothing really sticking out on the sides. That's all good. There is kind of a dead spot for pushing, which is a little awkward. Like right on the edges, but eh, not a huge deal. So just that one. The snake not showing its true colors. Yeah, these all move. And they should weigh down switches and whatnot. <laughs> Love me and my jokes. This guy's got jokes. He's a funny guy. So we will have the statues link back to themselves which should turn them to their other version, which will make them unmovable. Oh, that isn't set up yet. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Coming soon. Okay, so they still just spawn in. So yeah, that's one uh, kind of cool thing we're going to do with the statues is you'll be able to link to them and that will make them turn into their uncolored versions or their colored versions if you link to a, you know, the, the opposite version. So you can actually have an object that you need to link to to make it movable or immobile. So kind of neat. sure all these work. Good. Nice. It's kind of nice to see this decor menu starting to fill up. We have so many options now. Whoa, okay, there's a bug. <laughs> Glasses popping out of the uh, window. That with all of them, yep. Uh, but
Oh wait, what happened? Oh, they're not changing color either, it looks like. Okay, a couple bugs there still to work out. Oh, interesting. If you put them down on their own, they will change color. Okay, that looks kind of cool. The uh, invalid, <laughs> the red window. Look at that. <laughs> it's so evil. All right. Uh, Thomas, did you see those bugs? If you're still here. If not, I'll throw it in the chat later. Okay, so uh, next thing I want to do, I want to play through our endless dungeon. and see how it feels with the uh, enemy changes that remain. Doesn't affect the bats because they die in one hit. I was originally kind of worried about removing the iframes from the enemies, but yeah, really just the fact that you've got to wait for your sword swing kind of makes it a little easier. Now the ghost will probably want to fix that, but it's not a big deal. spawn these guys because I want to see how they feel when we can just keep hitting them. Yeah, it feels pretty good and I think what we'll do is um, looking at as we design more enemies um, keeping this system kind of in mind and maybe making some enemies that are tougher um, by design. So like an enemy that you can only hit from the back, stuff like that. So that, um, you know, that way we can keep the removed iframes, but make some challenging enemies still. I think whatever he uses to get Twitch chat, chat has stopped working. Oh, were you guys saying stuff? 
the last thing I saw in Twitch chat was, yeah, was they still just spawn like normal blocks. That was the last thing that popped up, and then your message just now. <laughs> I think it's something with Restream, because earlier it said Twitch wasn't connected, and then it, like, reconnected, so... Okay, but it's working again, anyway. Yeah, I thought people had just gone silent. <laughs> Well, sorry about that. So yeah, I don't have the chat. What were you guys saying? Sorry to make you repeat. I mentioned the new damage setup. The other major changes to the combat is that the player takes less damage now for most sources. Oh, that's right. But enemies can deal double damage while attacking. So walking into the Warthog will cause half a heart, but getting hit by a charge does a full heart. Nice. Yeah. Posted log in Discord. Okay. I'm going to read that really quick. <laughs> Look at all that treasure. Oh, all empty. <laughs> okay, cool. So you saw the bug. That's good. Yeah, the uh, the damage change should be fun to play around with. So you know, actually getting attacked does more damage than, you know, if you just, like, bump into the enemy. The Lizardmen should fire faster as well. Oh, okay. Let's play around with that. I think I've got some Lizards coming up here. Oh, yeah, this room's going to be harder now. Spicy. <laughs> Can you imagine if we all ghosted him at the same time? <laughs> really annihilated them in that room, yeah. Should be able to play a bomb and swing at the same time. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Let's try that. Oh, wait, let me uh, do this. I'll try it with the next one. Nice, yeah. <laughs> now he's all up with the chat to compensate. <laughs> Couldn't decide between place and lay and rope both. Nice. I knew what you meant. When you say fire faster, you mean the arrow is moving faster, right? Or do you mean their rate of fire? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it does seem a little faster, I think. I'm trying to remember what it felt like before. Oh, I missed one. Ah. Oh, you mean we should make it faster. Okay. I was gonna say. <laughs> Seemed the same. But I couldn't tell. Yeah, I agree. I think it should fire a little faster. 
Especially since we made them easier to defeat, you know. Increase the rate by 0.1 every day and see when he realizes. <laughs> Those pits are harder than the lizard folk, yeah, for sure. I feel like there's still something a little off with the pits. Like, it's still very easy to fall in them. I don't know why. Oh, Chewie's asking to be let out. Hold on. detection isn't great yeah there's something just a little off on it i don't know what it is oh that's right yeah we're gonna make it more gradual To Zelda as Lynx hovers over the pit for a moment before falling. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we're talking about, trying to implement a little bit. Like, you kind of, like... So it's not so sudden. Because, like, right now, it's just, like, you appear in the middle of the pit as soon as you get close. You know? It's a little jarring. Appreciate you uh, swinging by, by the way, Phantom Triforce. Always great to see you. Always appreciate the support. Candelabra's hit animation was sped up. Oh, okay. Wait, were they... Did I have some in here? I do, okay. probably good. We'll have to play around with that after this. I think I need arrows too, so I might have to go back. Who designed this level? Don't die, don't die. Okay. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot I did this. Okay. Oh, wait, did I lock it? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I love the time to switch, it's so nice. Oh no. Yeah, okay. It's okay, it's not a soft lock. We gotta go back and get arrows. Thanks. Yeah, I really like what Thomas did with the uh, the sound and the uh, the little bar. It's really nice. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, we have six arrows. That's enough. going to suggest maybe the auto disable spawners if given an item which stacks should always spawn one item per link trigger. Hmm. But then what's the point of stacking them? Why don't we just remove stacks at that point? Or are you, oh, or are you suggesting like you can only trigger as many as you put on there? So like if you put five bombs, you can only trigger it five times? <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I think I misunderstood what you were saying. Is that what you're saying though? Like if you put five bombs on it, then you'd only be able to trigger it five times and you get one bomb each time. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. No, no. Dang it. Oh, for the love of Pete. Oh yeah, it won't respawn if you're on it. Nine's good. Let's go. Okay, so you had a auto disable spawner that spawns keys. Currently, if you trigger it while a key was on top, nothing would happen. I'm suggesting that it adds a key to the stack. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Because you could create some puzzles, like you need to kill this many enemies and then it'll spawn, you know, that many items and then you use those items to like unlock a bunch of doors or whatever. 
Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, that way... Yeah, that's a good point, too, because, like, then... Right, if you solve the dungeon by, like, triggering the link, going and picking up an item, and then triggering the link again, and you the player has to do that in order to solve the dungeon, you could effectively break it if you, like, triggered both links and nothing happened with one of the links. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I gotcha. You know what I didn't play around with yet is putting the stool in like an open door and seeing what happens. If you can like push stuff into doors. Let's let's play around with that now. GG, there we go. So yeah, the dungeons, uh, the changes felt pretty good in there. <laughs> yeah, the over-engineered room. <laughs> we'll probably modify that one a little bit. Hey, welcome back, Matt. Thomas, I know we talked about a few things. Do you want to make cards for that stuff or or just write it, I don't know, write it down somewhere so we don't forget? Alright, I want to make an arrow spawner in this room, I think. Loving the overlays as you scrolled around. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about like the levels we already made we can take a look at. Yeah, it looks so much cleaner. Like it just it matches everything else a lot better than what we had before. Really cool. And then we'll a checkpoint here too. can maybe even apply the overlay icons to the timers on the timed switches. So for the timed switch, where is it? We put this little timer symbol like on the switch itself. So I think maybe that communicates it, but yeah, that's a good point. Maybe we should have like a little timer symbol. Potentially. Uh, Matt, I hadn't seen this little fish statue yet. He's pretty cool. That one's new. This is going to be the fishy room. The number three on the top right doesn't have the blue background on it.
Oh, the number of seconds. Gotcha. Yeah, no, you're good. That's, uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I don't think we considered that because we just implemented this. So. Yeah, for sure. Something to consider. Okay, uh, let me save this. And then I want to play around with... Something I didn't think to try is... Having an open door. And a stool. And what it do. So can I push this into the door? No, I can't. Okay. But I can get it kind of like stuck. Oh, you can kind of like wiggle it in there. Yeah. And then, okay, if I... Let me give myself a way out. Yeah, if you hit at an angle, you can kind of like wedge it into the doorway. Yeah, and then I'm assuming I'm blocked, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. Like, I think you should be able to block a door with a stool, but we should be able to push it out of the way, like up and down. <laughs> Stool locked, yeah. <laughs> this dungeon can't handle the power of the stool. player way to pull objects. Yeah, that could work. I think regardless, though, we probably want to make it so that stuff can't get stuck in the door. Interesting. So a one-way teleporter. So I can go through, but I can't go back. Yeah, I should have played around with the stool more when we made it. I think I was just so excited that it existed. <laughs> and you could push it all weird. It is very exciting. Also, one thing we've never really tested, I'm curious. And I think I know what will happen, but I'm curious what happens when you teleport and it's blocked as you're trying to come through. I'm pretty sure you still just go through, but...
Oh, okay. Cool. So, yeah, you actually just go back to where you were. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so yeah, we must have tested that at some point, like trying to push a block over it while it went off. Yeah, that's pretty neat. We have some new stairs that we played around with a little bit last time. So we can just keep these in the same room. So yeah, kind of the same thing with the stairs, like the stool gets stuck. I think how it works, it confirms the area is clear, plays the transition, then move the player. At that point, the area is blocked. So the move fails and it puts the player back. Oh, nice. I'm surprised the transition continues to play. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we should probably try to stop the stool getting stuck on stuff. Yeah, even here it's getting wedged in there. Okay, cool. Is this a barrier? But can I? Oh, it's missing a collider. Okay. Oh yeah, so enemy damage we wanted to play around with. That's right. I was trying to think there was one other thing. Okay. So a warthog, if it charges at you, I take one heart of damage. Got one heart missing here. Now if I just bump into the warthog, whoop, that was a charge. 
Well, you could kind of see it. So, that, and then... So there, yeah, you can see I'm only taking half a heart when I bump into him. But I take a whole heart when he hits me. So that's pretty neat. Um, neat thing are the spikes. So if you bump into a spike, you take half a heart. But if the spike bumps into you, you take a whole heart. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So what about slimes, right? Because they kind of wander aimlessly, so... If they wander into you, okay, it's just half a heart. So, half a heart no matter what. That's fine, because I mean... Oh, the red slimes do too, or one heart. Oh, it is just half, okay. I think half is fine for the slimes, because they're supposed to be an easier enemy anyway. Okay, so blue is half, I'll say. you, one heart, bump into him, half a heart. Nice. <laughs> Meow. Yeah, that's Chewy. It's based on animation, so I can add it to any specific animation. Oh, nice. Okay. So then, flame. If I bump into the flame, I take half a heart. If it jumps into me, whole heart. Okay, nice. Cool. All right, Chewy, come here. This cat, I swear. He is an old man, and he just got back from uh, an operation a couple weeks ago. He's doing great. <laughs> choo choo. Yeah, he's got a face, all right. Show me face. He's also missing a tooth on one side because he was a stray cat. <laughs> All right, lay down. All right, why don't we uh, take a look at some other dungeons and just see how they look with the new overlays. Now show us Beans. Yeah, Beans is laying down in the other room. So. Can't show him, unfortunately.
Yeah, it looks really nice. Like, look at that. Look at that room. It's beautiful. So the group outline goes over it a little bit, but that's probably okay, right? Or do we want, hmm. Yeah, we'd probably want the group outline to go over it, not under. Look like in Link Mode. Oh, good point. Now, in Link Mode, you want to see the groups over the other stuff. So, I think for Link Mode, that's probably fine. Yeah, and it's like really semi transparent. think group outline should go under in uh, play mode, right? Is what you're thinking. Because here's the thing. If we have an object... If we have an object that has both... That can move or something and hold an item... Actually, I don't think we do, do we? No, you don't. And yeah, we, we have a card we're going to look into making the tops of... Um, tall objects, semi-transparent in build mode. So like here, you'd actually still be able to see the lizard and everything. So we're gonna look into that. Yeah, I love the new icons, it looks really good. Oh, th this is one thing I was thinking of, and I keep forgetting to mention it. For the uh, active room, for which room's active, I wonder if instead of being camera-based, it should be like when you interact with the room, it changes. Because I've noticed there's some instances like, you know, maybe right here, I start working on this room, and I don't see it. But like maybe like once you click in the room, it'll change it, the active room. I don't know. We can talk about it maybe at the next meeting. Yeah, I think that, that might work better. Yeah, maybe just like once you click in that room, it becomes the active room. Yeah, maybe it would look better with icons on top. I don't know. Because, like, here it's a little hard to even see the arrows. But, I mean, we're in link mode, so it's like... 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so the active room is actually just for showing what groups you have and what links you have. So, yeah, the groups and links are room specific. So, yeah, this is going to show me because I see how I have an orange group in this room and it's just these three switches. But then if I go over to this room, I've got an orange group, but it's these two lizards. So, yeah, it's like room specific for the links and the groups. And yeah, right now it's just based on like where your camera is. But it leads to some awkward situations where, yeah, like I showed earlier, like maybe you're trying to, you know, edit this room, but this one's the active room. And... So. But yeah, it's looking really good. And we're, uh, so we're in the middle of working on our first boss in the game, so we're excited to, at some point here, show you guys that pretty soon. That's going to be really exciting. And some other new features coming down the line, so. Lots of cool stuff to look forward to. I think we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up the stream there. We got to, we got through, um, showing off some of that new stuff, got to play around with the... Uh, new icons, got to play around with enemy damage, taking away the uh, iframes and all that. Found a handful of bugs, so always a good session when you find some bugs. So appreciate everyone swinging by. Uh, we'll be back again next Friday to stream, I think. Yeah, should be around next Friday. So, uh, And we will... See you guys then. If you aren't in our Discord channel yet, we've got a link down below. Uh, page is also up to wishlist on Steam if you haven't yet. And yeah, we stream every Friday around 8 p.m. Eastern time for our weekly dev streams. So swing on by if you haven't. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. All right. Well, thanks all. I'm going to play us out with the trailer. Appreciate everyone swinging by. Thanks, Thomas, Matt, Phantom Triforce, Danny. Hope you guys all have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Same squish place, same squish channel. <laughs>